All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So Robert Saul actually just wrapped up his uh, coaches meeting press conference, right? We're seeing all the coaches have lengthy interviews here. Uh, not, not, not a surprise in the least, but man, Robert Saul really covered a lot of different areas of this football team. The offensive side of the football, the defense side of the football, Bryce Huff. Uh, address some free agents, address some coaches, address 2024, the future, and kind of the approach of the team moving forward. So let's talk about the first thing that he really started the presser off with, which was the fact that Mike Williams has, quote unquote, a long way to go coming off his ACL injury. Um, said he's on a similar timeline to Brees Hall a year ago. Now, I got to be honest, it was pretty tough hearing that, right? Especially so early within the press conference. But I got to be honest, we knew this was the case, right? We all knew Mike Williams was coming off the ACL. This wasn't like, you know, discovered in the, the, the physical after the Jets brought him in or anything like that. We knew that there was going to be a rehab process uh, in place. So, um, you know, unfortunately has a long way to go, but it is what it is, right? It, it just is what it is. Um, this is what has to happen for Williams to get healthy. So, you know, we, we just have to deal with it, it as unfortunate as it sounds. But then to kind of ta uh, to, to piggyback off a wide receiver, later in the presser, Sala did say that they felt good about a lot of the young players, uh, you know, really riddled throughout the team, Carter Warren, Max Mitchell, Jason Brown Lee, Xavier Gibson. He also did mention that Alan Lazard is expected to kind of have a bounce back season. Of course, you know, brought him in on a four year contract, didn't really live up to that year one. Talked about how, you know, it, it was kind of a big change, right? With, with things happening, you, we see it all the time with, you know, guys coming in on a big contract, they, they don't maybe live up to the money in year one. Uh, personally, I, I felt like that transition was going to be maybe a little bit easier for Lazard compared to, you know, other free agents out on the open market that we see typically from year to year because he had familiarity with Hackett and that system. And then, of course, Rodgers was in built, you know, in the building uh, to kind of help and smooth things along. He was there throughout training camp, OTAs, all that, all you know, everything. It wasn't until week one where he got hurt. Um, so. Again, ideally, like in my mind, Lazard needs to step up. He should step up, but he needs to. But Salah didn't really give the indication that, that he was pressing or that Joe Douglas was pressing to find a wide receiver, you know, in free agency or the draft. Of course, you know, the draft is kind of a different story, but it didn't really sound like he was worried about wide out, if that makes sense. Another position he didn't really seem worried about, but did say he's going to continue adding to the position is quarterback. Um, it, it, it felt like... Uh, with Salah's kind of tone and everything, his his response, it felt like, you know, every team enters the offseason with three to four quarterbacks, so that's what we're going to do, as opposed to, man, we, we're, we're, we're searching, we're desperately searching for, like, a young developmental quarterback, like, we're going to go handpick one, uh, we're, 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 we're still scanning the free agent market because we are really, you know, concerned about the room or anything like that. It, it felt... I at least got a sense of confidence from Salah in Rodgers and Taylor's health with those two guys just being the primary options. And then out of necessity, we'll just throw in a third quarterback before camp. And of course, by the way, we do have to take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, this is draft season, right? The draft is, I, I think, literally a month away. Uh, yeah, like a month away. Exactly. So we could get smoke screens, you know, they, they could be, you know, falling in love with a wide receiver in the draft or, you know, who knows what the Jets plan will actually be. You never want to leak anything to, you know, the media, especially at the coaches meeting where you have tons of media members there along with every other head coach. Um, so moving on, not only did he say that the Jets aren't done adding a quarterback, but they're also going to continue adding at safety and running back. In regards to safety, there are so many freaking good safeties still out in the open market. Micah Hyde, Quandre Diggs, uh, Justin Simmons, although I, I feel like Simmons is probably going to sign for you know relatively bigger money uh, at, at this stage in free agency. I don't think he's going to get a mega deal or anything, but I do feel like he's probably going to be the most expensive safety to sign. But I feel like the most, I guess, realistic option is just bringing Ashton Davis back. He talked about Chuck Clark. Tony Adams. So I don't know if in his mind he's kind of looking at that safety that or that third safety rather as the backup option or if he's looking at the positions, you know, suggesting, okay, we need a major upgrade here. I didn't really get that vibe though. 
right? Again, Chuck Clark was re-signed. I feel like I feel pretty confident that he's going to be a starter. And then Adams, in my opinion, had a solid year. Uh, so I, I do feel like he will probably not necessarily give the starting jobs to those guys, but you know, the, 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 those are the expected starters at this point in time. Now, as far as running back is concerned, this is a position that I really want to add a veteran. For me, I want to add a veteran who provides a little bit of a different skill set to a Brees Hall, right? Brees Hall is elite. Brees Hall is amazing. I love Brees Hall, and he's going to be the workhorse. But ideally, well, first off, you don't just enter an NFL year with two running backs on the roster, which is the Jets' current situation with uh, Brees and Izzy. But for me, I, I want to get a, a seasoned running back that's been there and done that. Again, a per somebody who provides a different skill set to Brees Hall so we don't have to rely on Hall to do every little thing. You know, if we can get a bruising veteran back, uh, somebody who maybe excels in, in uh, pass blocking, right? I feel like Zeke, honestly, would, be, would make a lot of sense. I feel like he would really come in and, and be a solid fit. Uh, for not only just what the Jets want to do offensively, which is get back to running the football. In those tough goal line situations in uh, you know fourth and shorts, third and shorts, I ideally I would want somebody, again, a big bruising back. So I, I feel like Zeke does make a lot of sense. But you could also point to other veteran backs like J.K. Dobbins is still out there. Uh, the Jets have options is pretty much the bottom line. Now, when talking about Keith Carter, because he was specifically brought up, obviously the offensive line performance was not great a year ago. There's been multiple players that have voiced their frustrations and have called out Keith Carter, the Jets offensive line and, and uh, running game coordinator. Sala backed him fully, you know, said he was a good football coach. He referenced the early days of the Tennessee Titans where they were able to run the ball effectively uh, and actually had this quote. Uh, he said, for Keith, he's a, he's a hard-charging coach. Uh, he's a damn good football coach. Sometimes messaging can get lost. I know he's working on all that stuff. I'm not worried about uh, his ability to coach this football team. Now, for me, you know, you look at the offensive line play a year ago. Yes, there was a bunch of injuries, but... You know, to, to see the performance and to see the way it was handled was just really bothersome, in my opinion. Even in camp, before people were hurt, right? When we were just literally taking guys and putting them in different positions on a day-to-day -day basis. Like one day, Becton's on the left side. One day, he's on the right side. We're, we're just swapping guys around. Tittman and McGovern were doing that, like bouncing back and forth between center and guard. Um, obviously, AVT, you know, we all know his positional versatility. I think there was some questionable stuff there. Then you compound that with, uh, again, the players, multiple players voicing their frustrations about him specifically. You have the Taylor Lewan comments. You have ex-Titans that kind of feel a certain way about him. Uh, like, in my opinion, we couldn't run the ball or throw the ball because of the offensive line, right? It wasn't the, the entire reason, but it was definitely a major part of it. I know Sala referenced you know, the, 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 run block, uh, the run blocking getting better as the season went on, but quite frankly, it wasn't up to par. The offensive line production needs to get better. It needs to get better. We cannot have a, a duplicate of 2023. But the good news here, you know, you look at some of the additions that the Jets have made. I feel like we're going to be such a better run blocking team. Morgan Moses anchoring down that right side, playing right next to AVT. I freaking love that combination. You're assuming that Tippmann would take another step forward. But then John Simpson has been, you know, really productive in the running game. And then Tyron Smith is Tyron Smith, right? His resume speaks for itself. But I think, again, our starting lineup, running the ball, throwing the ball, we're going to see two significant upgrades there. But with running the football specifically, I feel like that's really, like, th that's, th that's the focus here. Running the football, that is the focus. Uh, but again, it's important to round out the offensive line and continue to add guys there because we are still, you know, one injury away from, you know, being back to square one at really needing a left tackle. But Sala didn't really sound too concerned with it. He said that he actually felt really good about the depth on the offensive line. So take, take, take with that what you will. Another interesting comment was that Sala wanted to, or said that he wanted to add another offensive coach to the room, not uh, Jefferson or Tony Deuce, like a like a, an, another one added to the uh, added to the building. But at the end of the process, he felt like Hackett and Todd Downing were enough. And then uh, actually, Downing got a promotion to quarterback coach, 
as well as passing game coordinator. So kind of weird how things work out like that. But in any case, this is it, it seems like the, the, the Jets are hell bent on doing it. It really seems like the Jets are, again, hell bent on sinking or swimming with the coaches in house. Uh, personally, I would have loved to have added, you know, a, a third guy, an external voice, somebody who just has a fresh take on the offense, somebody who's not going to hold back because of egos in the building, somebody who's just going to call it like it is uh, behind closed doors, obviously. Somebody who's been around the game for a long time, maybe somebody who had a background in offensive line play and somebody who can really bring a sense of leadership to the coaching room. I, I felt like the Jets really lacked leadership a year ago. Um, I feel like Doug Marone actually made a lot of sense for the New York Jets, who's, uh, interestingly enough, still out there. You know, head coaching experience, offensive line background. I believe that I think he's actually from New York, uh, had time, you know, former head coach of the Buffalo Bills and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, I, I felt like he made a lot of sense, but it is looking like Salah is going to be rolling with Hackett. Downing and Keith Carter. And last but not least here, Sala kept referencing, and th this isn't anything new here, but Sala kept referencing the fact that the Jets just have to keep their head down and work. You know, uh, they, they worked last season, but, you know, there was so much hype and so much anticipation and, and stuff like that. He did say, you know, that comes with adding a guy in Aaron Rodgers, but, you know, for me, th it, it just wasn't the case last year. It really felt like the Jets were kind of like, bre like living and breathing off of the hype. Whereas this year, they kind of, or at least, you know, in Salah's eyes, they kind of recognized that, you know what, maybe maybe that was the, mis maybe it was a mistake. And this year, we kind of have to get back to square one. We've heard Sauce Gardner talk about it. We've heard multiple players talk about it. Just getting back to the basics, head down work. The, you know, the outside noise is the outside noise. It is what it is. And we just have to go out and make stuff happen. Um... You know, no, nothing is awarded to the Jets for acquiring all those players last year. McCall Harmon, Lazard, Cook, Rodgers made a swap getting Hackett in the building. I mean, man, there were so many, so many free agent acquisitions. Al Woods, Quentin Jefferson, bringing back Solomon Thomas, uh, Cobb, Billy Turner, like Tim Boyle. Like there were so many acquisitions last year. It was nuts to think about. But yeah, pretty lengthy uh, presser here from Sala. Of course, I'll leave it linked down below in the description box if you want to check it out. And uh, it should be actually cool. Uh, it, you know, today if you guys had some, you know, have some time going on teams YouTube channels or websites and just you know uh, watching all these different coaching interviews or at least having it on in the background while you're doing something, I always find it pretty interesting. You know, especially this time of year where the interviews are like 20, 30 minutes long. And it's not like a rush to get out of there. It's not like a post game where you're going to get short answers and stuff. So uh, it's it's been pretty cool. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts. And as always, go Jets.